Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to make a hydraulic cylinder trunnion mount. In fact, this exact mount. So let's get started on the job. Okay, so this is the piece of material we're going to start with, and this is the sketch that I got. And it's a piece of two inch thick, five inch wide, and I had them cut it a little longer than I need. I need 5200 finished and we are at 5580. So first thing we need to do is square this up, get these the saw cut ends right, and we'll do that up in the bridge board here. So we didn't get 100% clean up, but that's okay. We just need a flat surface that is perpendicular to our sides. And now we can uh, flip it and get it in the vise right and use a uh, carbide insert cutter to clean it up the rest of the way. We got quite a ways to go. We're done with our first pass and the reason I'm going back to the start instead of coming this way is because I want the chips to go that way away from me. Alright, so I got the, this side cleaned up. I'm going to flip it over now and then cut it down to the finished length.
The block is basically at size. There's not a lot of tolerance in this part. And so we take it out and we're actually going to flip it this way after we deburr it with the file. Okay, so here's a little trick I came up with years ago, and it's really sped up the process of trying to set up the four jaw. And I know a lot of people are going to think I'm nuts. But I drill that center hole. I need to go a little further. Hold her tight, spin her around a couple times. That'll help it kind of centerize itself. I know that's probably not a word. Lightly clamp it. Then you take your indicator. myself in there in a good spot. And 
This is where it gets tricky. I gotta move my tailstock back further. Which isn't gonna hurt me any for doing this. You can have that tailstock out as far as you want. You bring that indicator right down in. If you can get it there on your on your center. I'll have to fine tune it just a little bit. Okay. I don't know if you can see my indicator here, but I am tight into that center right now. I'm zero on that side. So I need to go 10 thou this way. only off by one thou this way so just do a little fine tuning nice a little bit more Right there. So it's really as quick and easy as that. Now, I've been doing this for years and I've had excellent results doing it this way. So now we'll go ahead and get this opened up and bore it out. So we're going to try out a new boring bar today. This is a TMX, um, uses a CNMG insert. This is an inch and a quarter diameter. I just ordered this in. I ordered, actually, um, I've had a couple of these over the years and I really like them. And uh, these came from KBC Tools and very good price on them. So I ordered three different sizes to go along with the ones I already have. So um, I bought sizes I didn't have. And we're going to use this today to bore this out.
but I'm only checking my bore with the caliper just until I get close and then I'll use a bore gauge. So I had this question a while back of how do you calibrate your micrometers and well you use the standard and you make sure it's you know clean, clean it with, I always use my fingers because that will get more debris than anything else. The other thing is keeping everything at the same temperature is, is kind of a key but you just bring her in and right there I'm dead on. Now, I could throw in some gauge blocks and get to the, the size that I need, um, but these have been very accurate, but adding the gauge blocks would sh prove that this thing is accurate. So next, I've got my Starrett 823 inside micrometer. We're going to check that. I think a micrometer stand is in order one of these years. And we are Where is it? There it is. We are right on. So, we can use our inside micrometer, we know it's accurate. Now I did mention using the bore gauge and we'll be doing that just to show how to set up and use the bore gauge. Now I did mention using a bore gauge and once we get my final pass, I have some tolerance on this thing, plus or minus a couple thou, surprisingly. Um, but I'll set up the bore gauge and show how to use that too. It looks like we've got Seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousandths to go. So I got my micrometer and my micrometer stand. I do not have that clamped tightly. It's very loose in there, as you can see. Um, but I'm set at my bore size and Here's the bore gauge, if you can see it. Just got a dial indicator on it. And let me move it back just a little so you can maybe see the whole picture of what I'm doing here. But I'm just putting it in the micrometer. And then I will set my bore gauge that way. even have it in the stand like that. It isn't easy. All right. We are set on zero. So let's go check and see where we're actually at.
Boy, I don't know if you can see that, but I am right on. 2.187, which is exactly where I needed to be. So pretty, pretty easy using the bore gauge. So cool, let's move this onto the mill and get the next steps going. And next we drill our holes and these go all the way through we're not going to finish them on the bridge port we're actually just starting them on the bridge port and then we'll move over to the to the radial arm drill
Well, there it is, all done. Hydraulic cylinder trunnion mount to my customer specifications. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, the building of this trunnion mount. Um, hydraulic cylinder trunnion mount um, bolts onto a machine. There's one on each side and then the cylinder goes between them. So very straightforward, simple job. Um, and with that, we'll end here until next time. Get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.